Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video. Another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to repair it. So, what we have here is a nice vintage one. Look at it. There we go. Atomic Arcade Pinball. Now, normally these ones here are made by Tomy, but this one says Pally Toy, but it does say Tomy there, so I don't know whether these were before, like maybe it was two companies merged into one, or whether this is a later model. This came out in 1979, but I don't know if this particular one is from that era, or whether it's later on or not, because I believe they made it for quite a few years. So uh, the box definitely looks like it's had better days, and more importantly, this thing here is faulty. So uh, let's open it up, and then I'm going to show you the listing, show you what I paid for it. It's nice artwork on the box, isn't it? Screams 80s. Oh, look at that. I wonder whether this was from Argos or something. That uh, model number there. Ta-da! There we have it. And we've got a couple of feet here to make it more upright. There we go. I'm already playing, huh? It's stuck there. Even the ball looks like it's uh, losing its... Even the ball's corroded or it's lost its... The ball's lost its chrome as well. Right, okay, so, uh, and I can actually see bits of black everywhere, and that must be the remnants of the chrome coming off, the, the chrome plating coming off the ball. Right, so apparently when you put batteries in this thing, it doesn't work. So let me, let me show you the, the listing. Okay, so here we have it here. If you have a look, it says Tomy Atomic Arcade Pinball Game Palatoy for, for repair, £4.99 plus £7 postage, so £11.99 in total. So the items themselves are obviously dirt cheap, it's just posting these things are expensive. Plenty of pictures with it, and it says here, as shown, a Toby pinball game structurally in good condition, no corrosion on battery contacts and mechanically working, but not electronically, hence for spares or repaired, made in Singapore. Now the silly thing is, I could actually buy this for not a lot more money working, but that's not gonna make a good video, is it? So I've bought a faulty one, even though the majority of them are working, so this must be quite a reliable toy, because it's actually hard to find a broken one. So uh, yeah, Money-wise, if you were to do this to try and make money, you're not going to make any money on this, I don't think, whatsoever. But I'm really interested to see how this works. Now, I'm sure I've played these when I was a child, but I don't know if I had one or my brothers had one, or whether I just played it at school or not. But from memory, these things, uh, the counters move up when you hit either these side bits or this top bit, something like that. But I remember it being quite a, quite a noisy toy. So let's uh, pop the batteries in and see exactly what it's doing. Right, so let's flip it over. So we've got a battery compartment here. And uh, yeah, they don't look corroded. So it takes D cell batteries and it looks like it takes five of them, one down here, and then one, two, three, four. Now, looking at it, this looks good, this looks good, that looks fine, that looks fine, that looks fine, but look at that. That's shoved right the way down in there, isn't it? That should be up higher, because how's the battery going to make contact with that? It could be as simple as that, because remember, something like this would be unlikely to be repaired, because there's not enough profit to be made on it. So when it comes to something like this, it would be like a, a genuine fault, and it could be as simple as that. But right, first things first, I'm just going to do what the seller would have done, and I'm just going to put it in. Oh, listen to that, it's making noises. It's making noises, let's turn that off. I'm thinking that maybe that one there didn't make a good contact, so let's have a look. It does look like it is, it is 
Maybe it's supposed to be like that. It is definitely touching. It just doesn't look like a good connection. I definitely heard a little whining. Yeah, can you hear that? Right, and now it's not doing anything. In a way, I think I'd be slightly disappointed if it was just this, because I really want to take this apart to see the inside of it. I think to begin with, let me just get some pliers and try to pull up. Can't even get that last battery out. There we go. I'm going to try and pull up that contact down here. But even if it does start working, then I think I'm going to take it apart anyway, because I really do want to see the inside of this. I'm just going to get some pliers and try to yank this up. Yeah, it's coming. There we go, it's up. Yeah, see it's sticking up now. Right, let's pop this in again. Thing is, I am going to have to take it apart to bend it, make it nice and straight. Let's just see if there's a way that I can get the battery in there just to see if it's going to work or not. There we go. Okay, no it's not that. It's making that noise again. Oh. I wonder if it's a bad uh, contact on the on and off switch. Can you hear it beeping? Right, okay, in a way I am I am pleased because I want to take this thing apart. So let's pop all the batteries out, take it apart and see what's uh, see what's happening. I'm just gonna get some tools. Okay, so looking around here, I'm not too sure how to take it apart. There's definitely three screws up here, so I'm going to start there. I can see a screw in here, but obviously I can't get to that. What's quite nice is, have a look here, you can see that there's a little kind of gate type thing here. I reckon, do you see this here? I reckon that when you bought this, it was like that there. And then, actually, sorry, not when you bought it, but look, I've just worked out now. It's for storing a ball so it doesn't rattle around the place. And then when you want to play it, you can put it down and it releases the ball. That's quite nice, that is. Little design touches like that are nice. Well, let's uh, get a screwdriver and undo the screws there. Underneath here, it looks like they're little uh, nuts on little bolts, so they're gonna be a little bit awkward for me to undo. Unless I get a little, I'm gonna have to try and get a little socket set out. Let me just see what I've got here, see if any of these fit. Be lucky if they do. No, that's the biggest one I've got in this set. Yeah, so I'm going to have to get my uh, socket set out for that, but I think my socket set's going to be too big for them. Anyway, to begin with, let's start up here, make it easy for ourselves, and you never know, it might all come apart from there. Right, these are all really loose. Really loose. And they don't appear to be actually undoing anything. Now, do they go right the way through? Oh, they do, they go... Look, they go right the way through to here, don't they? Yeah, turn in here. See? Right, so I'm going to have to have a look, see if I've got anything to do then. Right, I haven't got any little sockets small enough for that, because the ones for my car are going to be way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some long nose pliers just to try and keep it, uh, keep it in place while I undo it. Not going to be a huge amount of pressure on them. Yeah, that's it, it's already coming undone. I right, definitely don't think this has been a part before. Right, let's see, it's all starting to fall apart here. Let's see what's going on. Right, okay. Oh, wow. So this is the reset up here. How nice does it all look? Well, we've got a little speaker here. 
little light bulb there for the uh, the red light. Here's our counters here, which must go up and down when we're well up when we're winning. And uh, here's the on and off switch. So I wonder, could it be a faulty on and off switch? Okay, and there's a load of wires going down. That must be to do these things here, these little uh, bouncers and these things that move around the place. There you go, the reactive bumpers and the proton pumper. There are the contacts for the batteries here. And which was the one that I messed around with? It was this one here, wasn't it? Yeah, so it does look like it should be should be down, I think, to be the same as this one here. Right, so this looks like most of the looks like the circuit board is here, unless there's more underneath here. I think I'm gonna take it completely apart because I'm really interested in how it all works. Oh look at that. Right, so we have a motor here with a gear, like a bevel gear type thing, that then goes onto here and then moves these around the place. Right, let's just word this up. So I'm presuming once this gets to 900, it will then go onto this one. Yeah, look now, the next one's turning. There, one. And then uh, once that gets to nine, this one should turn. Right, look at that. There we go, now this one's turning. Lovely. Right, okay. Don't want to mess with that too much. Now to whoops. Now to reset it, you have to, oh there we go, we just press it down here to reset it. And then it all resets back to zero zero zero. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, very good. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. Really is nicely made. Right, okay, let's see what I can take apart here. Right, if you have a look at the, the red wire here, can you see it's attached to the actual plate itself? But if you look at the white wire here, it looks like... I don't know whether it's trapped underneath the screw because it looks like there's a bit of solder on the edge there but it looks like it bypasses that and it looks like it goes under the screw itself I wonder whether it could be as simple as that being the fault or not I think I'm gonna concentrate on here just for a minute or two before I take the rest of it apart down here just to see what the uh, see if there's anything obvious here oh no it is soldered it is soldered onto here Yeah, the connection doesn't look great, but it is still making the contact. Right, okay, I've got my multimeter. New set of leads. Nice and sharp. Right, let's go on this switch and see if I can work out what's what. So we've got... Uh, that wire goes off there. Let's just go between these two here a minute. Okay, so that's not doing anything. Just go on the black and the white. Black and white, not doing anything. Let's go on the yellow and the black. No, and let's go on the yellow and the white here. No, okay. Well, initial testing looks like the switch might be faulty. Because it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, I'm just going to do that again. I'll fast forward through it. Right, okay. To me, this switch doesn't look like it's doing absolutely anything. So, I think I'm going to take it apart and uh, see if I can look inside it because I've definitely got little tabs here that I can push up and then hopefully this metal thing will come out. You never know, something might have spilt down there years ago. Let's prise these open. Now 
Now I'm just going to zoom in because there's a good chance that I'm going to break the wires here. So I'm going to zoom in so I can refer to the video. So I know which each of them go. So I can see the two like rivet things here. White on top. Black to the left. Yellow to the right. Alright, let's see if something becomes obvious. Is that going to come off easy or not? No, maybe not. Now, now it will. Right, so that's just a metal cover. There. And these two. Th ah, look. Right, can you see this one here? Looks like it's really badly looks like kind of corroded or even maybe burnt away could be just tarnished so actually this switch looks like quite a simple affair so what it's doing is it's just moving from those two contacts to those two contacts so if this contact in the middle wasn't right then it's not going to work oh okay right so when it's off it's up here isn't it on these two fresh ones yeah so the middle two are always in contact but when it's off, this part here is going between this one and these two top ones. And as you can see, there's nothing on the two top ones. But when we move it down, it connects both the black and the yellow to the white. And the white here says uh, minus. And the yellow here is positive, and I don't know where the black... That so goes up, and then it must go through and then travel down through the black. Yeah, so it connects the, uh, yeah, the white with the yellow and then goes through the black down that way. Right, okay, I'm going to give this a little clean up and see what's underneath here. I'm going to use some IPA. Now, the more I'm working with IPA, the more my hands are starting to all crack up along here. Can you see? I never had an issue with dry hands, but since doing this uh, trying to repair series, my skin's all drying up here, which is uh, not necessarily a good look. So I'm going to have to really be well behaved and start wearing gloves every time I use this stuff now. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using. These go in here. What I'm not too sure about is whether they go with the brake like that on that side or whether they go with the whole one on that side there. I don't know. I mean, does it even make a does it even make a difference? Because it's all going to be contacting, isn't it? So I'm not sure why there's a brake in it like that. Well, I know why there's a break, because obviously it's easier to make like that. But I'm wondering whether it makes a difference or not. I don't think it does. Right, that's a little bit tarnished there, so I'm going to have to get the fiberglass brush on them in a minute. I'm just going to keep cleaning here, and then I'm going to get the fiberglass brush on this as well. Cleaning it right up. Oh, lovely. It's back together now. This way round because this was the bit with the most tarnish on it, so that says to me that these were in contact with here. So I'm going to do it this way round. Isn't it nice with the old switches that there's a chance of taking them apart to to actually fix something? So they're just replacing all the time. gloves off now. Right, let's get the multimeter back out and see if it does anything now. So that should be off here and on there. Right, 
So at the moment we're off. So let's turn it on and now let's see if it does it. There we go. Excellent. And off. Nothing. Where he? On. Right. I wonder, could it just be that? I wonder if there's a, well, I know that is it. I wonder if there's anything else which is faulty as well. Well, I'm going to put it back together temporarily just to see if it's working. I mean, I still want to take it apart because I have to anyway, because if you have a look, can you see that bit of uh, gold uh, chrome, uh, chrome plate in there from the ball? So I'm going to have to take it all apart anyway and probably have to try to clean up the wall so it doesn't keep leaking that, that chrome plate in everywhere. So let's temporarily just put it back together. That's let's leave it off so we don't spoil the fun if it does liven up. Also have to sort out this contact down here because you can't do it without using a separate tool. Here we go, let's zoom out. Is it going to do anything? There we go. Right, okay. Uh, let's just see if it's going to hit down. Right, so these things don't look like they're working. Oh, they're working. Oh, they are working. Excellent. Right, okay. I don't want to mess it up yet because I want to, you know, clean it all up, put it back together, and then see how the inside's working. But they definitely wiggled like that for a second or two, didn't they? But not to begin with, but then... I'll tell you what, let's do it one more go. Let's do it one more time. I want to see if this gear's spinning up here as well. But the light's working. So let's... Uh, Couldn't see if it was spinning or not. Yeah, the gear's spinning up there as well. So that says to me that it's all going to work. What a fantastic, really nicely designed toy so far, isn't it? It's just amazing that after all these years, it looks like it's still going to work fine. Well, let's take this thing apart completely so we can see everything that's going on. Ah, uh, look at this. This looks like it just pops out somehow. Look how that bottom comes out. Let's take the batteries out. So undo these screws here. Right, so there's going to be a spring on here, so I've got to make sure that that doesn't go f flying out anywhere. Is it going to come out or not? Still doesn't want to come out. Turn it around here. See, it all needs a clean lot of dirt in there. It doesn't want to come out very easily. Get the ball out. Yeah, there you go, you can see.
Ah, uh, there we go. I just had to move that little gate thing, gate thing away. Right, so this will give me an opportunity to clean this. So these things don't spin it, they just bounce off here. Hey, they literally, this is just an elastic band. Again, you can see all the dirt on here, so that, can, that will come up nice when it's clean. gate's come out down the bottom, I'm just a bit confused how it goes back in. I asked it, it's that way around, okay. Okay. Oh, I wonder whether it's when it rolls over here, look, it says roll over. When it goes over these, can you see that they're moving up and down? And you can see that it's where it's been hitting up and down here that all the chrome plating's gone on these bits, so I'm going to have to get a hoover and hoover this all out. These things just pop off. Ah, oh, look at that. Ah, oh, that's nice. It's actually metal. How nice is that? It's not paper or card or anything. Ah, oh, brilliant. Here we go. So this is it here. Right, let's see if we can get our head around this. Now, let's come in a little bit. Let's go over. Right, so the bottom bit's very straightforward when you do the flippers because, as you can see, it's just on a spring and then these go into these bits here which make the flippers go up and down. So that's really easy to understand yeah right that's easy and then they obviously can work independently each other but they spring back because of this spring in the middle right now so what do these things do here so these vibrate uh, when you go over here Okay, I don't know. I know there's just one motor here that controls all of it. But I can't quite get my head around the mechanism. Well, I'm just going to try and get my head around this. Well, I'm starting to get it. If you have a look in here, this uh, this part here, you can see that basically there's like a white gear and then there's also a green gear. And the green gear, when you turn this, will start climbing up this orange thing and then it only gets so far and instead of the green gear climbing anymore, it basically then starts to push the orange thing down. So if you have a look in here, Right, so watch. So it's it's uh, down here like so, and then this is in the upright position, and then 
when we start going down like this it starts bringing this thing down lower can you see it's climbing up and bringing it down lower until it gets to a certain stage where it then releases and it pops back up and if you have a look at the very bottom there's a metal contact here that goes against this other contact and uh, I think it hits it and that must be a sign for the motors to go the other way would it be so look it's doing that way goes down it hits that there and then I think would it tell the motor to go the other way and then when it goes the other way how does it know when to stop going that way and also if you have a look at the gear this side you can see that it will only turn this when it's going in one direction so right now when I'm turning this gear this way this is turning yeah so obviously that's counting up the score but it only goes so far and then it will stop now it stops until that goes down again there down and back up so but I don't know how these ones on this side work I really don't know but every one of them have gears that go around the other gear and moves them up and down I'll be honest with you I don't know they're kind of like on a cam but I don't know how it knows where the ball or maybe they just all go at the same time every time it's triggered I suppose they just all go at the same time they're not going to be individual are they because it's just a one motor uh, I, I don't know I'll be, be honest with you it's above it's above me unless I was to really like, sit down and, and work it out fully and watch it in in operation Actually, I suppose we could pop the batteries in, couldn't we? There's nothing stopping us from popping the batteries in and then pressing these things here and seeing, seeing exactly what it does. Why not? If I break it, then uh, it's not the end of the world. Turn it on. Right, so that's constantly spinning, and every time it goes here, it's just that one going. How, how do we get the other ones to go? Also, it is sensitive. When it touches here, oh, so it's every time the ball rolls over, it goes. That's amazing. Ah, okay, okay, I've got it, I think. All oh, right, okay, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, basically, this is always spinning, hence the reason it's going to wind up using the batteries very quickly. So this is always spinning here, but it won't allow these to spin, because if you have a look here, let me zoom in and show you one of them. Right, if we take this one here, for example. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the cog on the far side is always spinning, but this isn't spinning because this is in the way. But when the ball comes over and the weight of it goes there, this then allows it to spin. And can you see now it's moving up and down? Sorry, my hands are in the way. One second. Right, there you go. So this doesn't spin because this black thing stops it from spinning. But when it goes down, this little bit here then is allowed to go past this black bit. And then if you have a look, can you see now? Hold on. There, can you see it moves up and down? Yeah? And it looks like it's the same on all of them. So again, if we were to take the one on this side here, you can see the black thing stopped this white thing from spinning. But as soon as the ball goes over this area here, puts weight on it, and then allows this to uh, spin, which then makes this... Uh, orange thing go up and down which you know hits the ball further oh, that's amazing so watch see here it's gonna this this thing here is now gonna spin this one here this is gonna spin
That's nice, that is. What I'm not sure about is how it knows to make the sound when this goes down. There must be a metal contact that runs along the bottom somewhere to let this know. Because every time you press it down, it makes the noise. But I can't see where that is. I can't see where it is. Do you know what I mean? Because it makes the noise, doesn't it? So electronically, it knows. Let's say this is just mechanical, but electronically, it knows to make that bing bing noise every time you go down. I can't see how it knows to do that. Turn it on again. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's this rail at the bottom. Right. So along the very bottom there, there is this little rail. Can you see it here? It's a little sort of copper, just like one of these, a copper uh, axle, let's call it, right the way down the bottom. And it's the copper axle here that makes these two things hit together. So now you see these two contacts here with the black and the blue wire? If I tap them, it's going to make the noise. So watch this. Ready? There. And that's how that's what happens. You can tell those batteries are not going to last long. So oh, I'm really happy with that. I'm so glad I took it apart. So now what I have to do is I have to work out just how to fix this contact up here. I think we'll do that now. And then it's just a case of taking it all apart and giving it a really good clean. We're not taking it apart, I'm just going to be wiping around here. I'm not going to get involved with taking out the gears and greasing them. I'm happy now that I understand how it works. Now, I don't really fully understand the gears, how they're spinning round. I can see that there's a gear here, so obviously they're working round that gear. I mean, it's very complicated for such a simple toy, but that's what makes it so nice, that it's just been nicely designed, and in my opinion, nicely engineered. Now, with uh, a lot of people, they might you know, fully understand this and think it was just really simple and really easy, but not in my instance. I think that this is pretty complicated, and uh, I just think that it's amazing that somebody sat down and designed this system to run off one motor. I think it's just, I think it's genius. Right, okay. Maybe I'm easily pleased. Let's sort out this contact over here. This was the this was the dodgy one. So all I have to do is straighten that up, I believe. And it should be okay then. Do you know what? I'm trying to think, how was it all the way up here if I had a screw in it? I wonder if this screw is, uh, if it came out of here. Oh, I don't know. Right, let's see if that's going to be enough. Actually, I'm going to need to bend this top round a bit. No. I'm going to bend this round more that way and then when the battery goes on it, it will force it to go in the right direction. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's gonna that's gonna work now. Let's see. Yeah, that will work. And then when the other batteries go on, it will force it to go down. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, let's give this thing a real good clean up.
for those of you that are curious to the little circuit board, you can have a look at it here. It doesn't say UF on this one, it says 10 volts, 100 MFD. Uh, would that have been a different way of making uh, writing microfarad? I don't know. Some transistors there, resistors, capacitors, these capacitors as well, these ones here, I'm not sure. But luckily I don't have to get involved with any of that. I'm just going to put this one in the sink with a toothbrush and give it a real good clean up. Alright, okay, so it's all come up lovely and clean, so I need to put this back on now. Then when it's all together, I'm going to give the outside plastic a good clean. Now when it comes to the ball, I've just given it a bit of a rub. Bits are still falling off it, but because of the age of it, I don't really want to take all the chrome off because that's how it would have been originally full of chrome. So I'm just going to leave it as it is, but unfortunately it means that when it's played and played and played, then all of this eventually will come off, but I don't want to be the one to uh, completely remove it. for me just to wash this bit in the sink. So there we have it, all nice and clean. And it has come up pretty good, it's not perfect. I've just noticed that there's a little mark there on that silver thing. I'm not sure whether that was there when I was cleaning it or not. But uh, yeah, it's, it's come up really good, look at it. And from the testing earlier, it looks like it's all working. So now let's pretend we took it out of the box now. Let's see how easy it is. So I'm not going to mess around with here. I'm just going to put it in the way it tells me to. So you can see that now goes in. There, 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 and there. That's on there, put the legs in. And now, let's see it working. So. That's it, reset, on. Right, so put this to three. There we go. Yeah, the counter's definitely working. Flippers are working. Everything's working. Right, let's bring this downstairs and then uh, let's have a competition with a few family members. One thing I've just noticed, oh, I've left this out. Right, I've got to take this apart just to pop that in there, but that won't take long.
Right, so we're back together properly. Now let's take it downstairs. So here we have it all set up, and this is going to be the 2018 Pinball Wizard competition. Everybody wants to win this, of course. So it's going to be Ben first, then Jody, then Chloe, then me. And uh, we're going to have three balls each. So if you have a look here, you're going to move this down to three. And then each time you do this, it's going to go. So if you, uh, when the ball goes down, when the ball's here, when I do this here, it's going to automatically knock it over. So it's quite good. So let's release it from the gate. And first up, we're going to have Ben. Now, obviously, I have to fast forward through this because it's going to take quite a while. But uh, we'll see at the end who's the, the victor. Hopefully, it's going to be me. Okay, so first up, we have Ben. So you need to turn it on. And the count has been reset right zero. Short game, so that is two four four zero. So if you write that down, right. So next we have Jody. So we're going to reset it, and then we need to turn it on again. Score. Oh, it's a little bit unfair because it got caught there. Right, the score is is that an eight or a six? Six thousand three hundred and ninety. So here we have Chloe now. Interesting technique here. Oh well, whatever wins. I call this a nice and quiet technique, yeah? <laughs> right, one more left. You need to get 400 to, to be in the lead. Get me in the lead. I might have to use this technique. Does it take a lot of skill? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, wow, 9,000. Not bad. Right, now it's me, the master, the pinball wizard. Here we go. Okay, so I've got 9,000 to beat. I didn't reset it. I love it. There. Oh, I've got. I can't tell the score, it's all gone wobbly. I've got 2,000, I think, to get on this last ball. I'm feeling confident. 1,000. This is close. What happened was I didn't reset it properly. So, what is it? Is that a nine? It's a nine. This is very tense. That's definitely a nine. What's this one though? Zero. Is it a zero? Okay. Zero. Yeah, but what's that? Zero. That's a one. Uh, that's a one, isn't it? Nine. What dragon? Nine zero one nine. Is that possible? Does it go up in one? Yeah. There we go. Nine zero one zero. I think. Uh, Look at that, 10 points ahead, you see? But that's all it takes. And if you think about it, I had already started before I reset it, so I think I am the convincing winner on this one. Bit cruel, hey? But the 
But uh, anyway, so that's it. I think this was a nice mix of kind of electronic and mechanical. And what I liked about this one was it looks like it's all working from one motor. And if you'd asked me beforehand how it works, I would have thought that each of these would have had their own motor. So I really enjoyed looking at the inside of this. And also, what a nice little fix as well. Just corrosion, well not corrosion, but just like uh, tarnish on the little switch there. So I think really this has probably been, I think this has been my favorite trying to fix. Even though it was easy, I really like looking at the inside of it and it surprised me how kind of complicated it was in a mechanical way. So if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Say bye guys. Bye. bye. See you later, take care, bye now.